swear he's only he's only quiet when he's on us. He is either crying or on us. That that's about how much my life differs right now. <laughs> hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. My god, it has been a long time, but I'm back. But um honestly, I feel like I couldn't get back on here without showing you guys the reason of my disappearance is this little guy right here. I'm also dealing with natural lighting right now, so if it goes in and out and it's kind of annoying the entire time, I'm sorry. But um, I just wanted to get on here and um, share with you guys Isaiah's birth story because if you've been with me since Mariah's birth, you know I had um, kind of specific expectations for Isaiah and I wanted things to go a certain way and I was pretty determined to make it happen and um, yeah, kind of nothing went the way that I planned. So this is going to be a like a come to Jesus birth story about nothing going as planned, but coming out with a beautiful, healthy baby boy. So yeah, if you guys are interested to hear all about Isaiah and how his birth happened, please stay tuned. <gasps> Isaiah, it's your first time on camera, bud. What do you think? Don't get sick on my new shirt. What do you think? So Isaiah was due on February 26th. <laughs> he was due on February 26th. If you're not aware, Mariah was breached. We tried to turn her. She was stubborn. I had a C-section. So from the jump here, like as soon as I started going to my doctor's appointments, they were like, we don't induce women who've had a C-section. You can go off base to the British hospitals or you can go into labor naturally and have a scheduled C-section. So my recovery with the C-section, um, it's pretty shitty, honestly, and I didn't wanna do it again and have it like a toddler to look after and recover from a C-section. So I was like, no, I'm having Isaiah naturally and that's the end of it. I'm not going off base. I've heard horror stories about the local British hospital. Sorry if you're British, but um, I, all I heard was like, you have to share a room with other women in labor and your husband's not allowed in there. You're not allowed to have your phone. It was just basically another element of labor that I didn't want to deal with. So I was like, I would be much more comfortable in an American like base hospital. So. so we gave ourselves until March 8th, which would put me into 41 weeks of pregnancy that if I did not have Isaiah naturally and go into labor naturally, that I would have a scheduled C-section on Friday, March 8th. So March 1st comes rolling around and I lose my mucus plug. So that was like the first thing that happened to me. I was really excited. I cried tears of joy because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm actually, you know, this is actually, I'm gonna feed him while I'm talking to you guys. I was like, you know what? This is actually gonna happen. I can labor naturally. This is, it's gonna be great. And so I lost my mucus plug and nothing happened. Is this weird? I don't think it's weird, this is real life. So yeah, I lost my mucus plug and literally nothing happened until March 3rd, which actually was my birthday or is my birthday. And I was like, this kid is not gonna steal my birthday. I already make enough sacrifices as a mom. I don't need him to steal my birthday. So I was getting some weird, like I have some notes down here. I was getting like sharp back pain on the third. So the afternoon I was like, I feel like something's coming, but I just wasn't so sure like what it was all about. So by the evening of March 3rd, I was having contractions that were about like an hour apart and they weren't like even big contractions. They were just like, oh, this is uncomfortable. This is like period pain contractions. So March 3rd, I was experiencing contractions about an hour apart and then I went to bed and I slept through the night like everything was normal. So then the next morning, CJ was getting ready to go to work and I woke up around like 6.30 and I woke up to a contraction. So we timed them and they were about 10 minutes apart and then they got to the point where I was like, OMG, this freaking hurts. And I couldn't talk through the contraction. So we showered, got everything together, got Mariah um, to daycare and then we went into the hospital to see if I was dilated. So when we got to the hospital, um, yeah, I was... I was getting like kind of nervous because everything was hurting a lot more than ever. like I was I knew that it was gonna hurt and they told me everyone told me like contractions are the worst part of it but I always thought that I had like a pretty high pain tolerance no <laughs> I do not uh, I was really uncomfortable and I was like really anxious I was like 
they're gonna go in like we're gonna go in there and they're gonna tell me that I'm not dilated at all I'm gonna be like one centimeter dilated and then sure enough I was one centimeter dilated but I was still having contractions every 10 minutes so I was like well we live 30 minutes away what are you telling me so they sent us home and they were like give it until two or three o'clock write out the contractions see how you're doing come in two three o'clock and we'll see how dilated you are so we went home and basically i was miserable on the couch for like five hours crying through contractions just hating my life getting in all these positions having cj apply counter pressure to my back and it was just awful and and that was that okay yeah so it just wasn't any fun two three o'clock rolls around i'm like let's go to base let's see if i'm dilated so we get in there and they check and i'm automatically like four centimeters dilated so they admit us right away okay so side story here you guys i always thought like i would do like a natural birth and whenever i talk to mothers and i was like oh i think i want to do a natural birth they're always like more power to you go ahead and do it there is no way i could do it 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 blows my mind women that can have a natural birth with like no pain management options and if you have done that you are a superwoman and i congratulations because i i cannot i can't even i cannot even imagine doing that that no no so after they figured out that i was four centimeters dilated they admitted us to a room right away so it was me cj and my mom we were all there so once we got in the room, like I was still working through the contractions and I was like, so when should I get an epidural? Cause I didn't want to jump the gun. So they were like probably around seven to eight, then you can get the epidural, like seven to eight centimeters dilated. So I was like, okay. So I just bit the bullet and tried to write out the contractions. So my hospital actually offered nitrous. So what they said, cause as a pain management option. So if you don't know, it's just like the laughing gas. They said that it won't make the pain go away. It'll just ease my anxiousness. And honestly, I felt literally nothing. <laughs> I was trying to use it. I was using it, bouncing on the medicine ball, getting all these positions to try and deal with the labor, but it I couldn't feel like it was taking the edge off like they said it would. So um, there's something to note if you are given that options or if you have used it and you felt like it did something for you, let me know because I'm still kind of like puzzled on what I was supposed to do because I didn't feel any kind of relief yeah. for taking the edge off or anything. So yeah, so they checked us in around like three in the afternoon, around seven, eight o'clock. I was like, okay, so what's happening? By this point, my water still hadn't broke um, and Isaiah was still super high. Like they were checking to see where I was in between um, the contractions and stuff and they were like he's still really high your water's not breaking we can break your water for you but we're not sure what's going to happen they were really uncomfortable with breaking my water because he was so high so about this point i was just i was done i had been up since six in the morning now we were going on like seven o'clock at night and then going handling contractions is hard work i was i was getting super tired so by seven o'clock, like I still hadn't napped at all. And they're like, okay, so we think you're dilated to a point now that it's a good idea to get the epidural. So around 7.30, I got an epidural and I was, I was so ready for it. It didn't hurt. I had a spinal tap with the C-section like that. That was really uncomfortable. The epidural was interesting. And that's like the only way I can describe it. It's just an interesting, interesting feeling and feeling all that tingliness it's just it's just weird but um so the epidural it was great like I smiled from relief like within the first like 10 minutes I was a happy girl and then going on like 30 45 minutes it's like it disappeared and I could feel nothing on my left side and I just felt the most intense sharp back pain with the contractions on my right side I had no idea what was happening and they said that this is, they suspected that Isaiah was sunny side up so that's why I was having such intense back pain and I remember telling my mom I was like it's not really the contractions at this point it's my back pain it was it was the most intense pain 
I had ever felt. And by this point, it was, you know, going on, um, basically, I had the epidural, and I was in labor from 8 at night to 2 in the morning, trying to figure out what's happening because my water still hadn't broke they still didn't want to break my water um and they just wanted me to ride it out and i had the anesthesiologist come back and try to adjust my epidural because at this point i was kind of freaking out because i was feeling everything i didn't know why the epidural wasn't taking i didn't know why i was still feeling everything because i thought that was the point of the epidural was to help me with pain management but um by like two o'clock they were like what do you want to do you can go in for a c-section or we can wait till you're more dilated so we can break your water and by two o'clock in the morning i had been doing this for like 21 hours trying to get him out and he was still so high it was hard to breathe he was right under my boob and through the contractions and with the epidural and sitting up in all these labor positions, I was I was pretty freaking out because it was super hard to breathe. And I don't know if it was just a combination of him being so high, me being so big from being pregnant, and the epidural making me feel numb. It was, I don't know, it was just, it was kind of starting to freak me out, honestly. So yeah, at this point, I just kind of lost all faith in the anesthesiologist and all faith that they were going to be able to figure out my pain management. And I was just in so much pain <laughs> and so uncomfortable. And just with the pain like right on my back and only on one side, I was just really scared and I had no idea how I was gonna be able to deliver him vaginally by this point because everything that they had told me, like I just lost faith in being able to have my pain managed correctly and I was just terrified that we were gonna I was already so tired and we were gonna get to this point that I wouldn't be able to push and it would just be a really bad situation just because I was so exhausted I was just so like mentally shut shut off by this point I was like um I was really considering getting the c-section and I talked to the doctor and I told her that and she was like well if you really want to get the c-section we can give you the c-section but i know how much you wanted the vaginal birth and i it was like two o'clock in the morning and i had given up at this point i was like i don't think he's willing to come because we had been making no progress the water didn't break i was seven to eight centimeters dilated but he was still all the way up here flipped over no intentions of working with my body to travel down where he was supposed to go and I had talked to my friend since I work at the hospital I have a friend who's a nurse and she was saying how like it's all kind of about nature's how he wants to do it should I get the c-section or should I just try and labor and she was like she just told me that if he's not coming down, maybe there's a reason he's not coming down. And that really made me feel a lot better and a lot more safe with my decision to get a repeat C-section because maybe I wasn't going to force him down. I didn't want to break the water and try and force this thing going when he wasn't ready. Because even just talking about that kind of makes me nervous about forcing the baby out because of complications and... I didn't want to do that so by this point I was just like you know what I am I tried I tried to do a vaginal birth and I was like just give me the c-section and you guys for my first c-section I was nauseous and throwing up like the entire time and it wasn't it wasn't fun at all I'm telling you I was so tired that by the time they relaxed me enough and got the medication even enough for the c-section I slept and I napped during the c-section that is how relaxed slash exhausted I was so had the c-section um, and he, he was still super high during the c-section I remember waking up and having them push like right under the boob to get him to come down so they can pull him out with Mariah it was like they just cut me open got her out but with him they had to push on top of his head to get him to come down so they could pull him out. 
and then um the doctor was telling my mom that it's a good idea that i did do the c-section because if they were trying to do this vaginally they didn't think that it would have been a good situation so i had the c-section in the end and recovery this time was so so much easier than the first time and i'm thinking it has to do with all my scar tissue and maybe already being numb but i swear the first time i had a c-section i was just i hated life no i like hated life i couldn't move i couldn't sit up i couldn't lean over and then this time like nine days after the c-section i was feeling like 85 90 percent normal so it has been a month and little man is a month old but um he was actually born at 4 17 in the morning on march 5th and after he came out and they took um cj got him back to do skin to skin and i was wheeled back into into the room i was just so relieved that that stage of pregnancy and delivery and labor was over and i could just start loving on the little man and just like going on with the next chapter of our lives but um we were able to breastfeed successfully like the minute after he was born and I got transferred back to the room of course and um I was prescribed oxytocin and ibuprofen but I haven't taken any of the oxy just because I didn't want it to flow through the breast milk and to him so I just did ibuprofen and that lasted for like 10 days and then I've been medication free and yeah, he's had a strong latch since the hospital. So we are currently breastfeeding. Um, this time around, I'm being a lot more lax with breastfeeding because I still go to college um, once a week at night for like four hours on Wednesdays. So we got some, we got some formula and I had never used formula. CJ and I don't really know like we had to do research and stuff, but um, I'm just so much more relaxed this time around knowing that if I'm not there to give him the boob, CJ is there to give him formula and to make sure he's okay. Because when you're a breastfeeding mom, I feel like there's a lot of pressure and you're, you're tethered to your baby, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But you know, I have a toddler, I have school, I have work, I have a lot of other things that I have my hands in. So it kind of it kind of gets overwhelming to feel the pressure of okay, let me sit down and feed the baby. And I know it's good to spend that quality time with your baby and that's like the only positive thing about it and breast is best. I get it. But it's just it's a sacrifice to actually sit down and just take the time to relax and constantly feed your ba feed your baby because he girl, he can eat. He can eat and then the first like two weeks after he was born i had a bleeding and cracked nipple and every time he would latch i would just get um tingly like numbing sensation from the breast milk breaking through the scab and the blood and it was just a bad situation so after i was bleeding on one boob i just made the decision i was like taylor you're gonna go through with this practice and we're only going to eat off the bad boobs so i could get the latch right every single time so that's what they don't tell you about breastfeeding is that it takes some effort because he's learning and you're learning him and it's a lot easier with your second one but it does take some effort and determination to successfully breastfeed and keep with it but um yeah that is that is his story everything that basically i didn't want to do kind of happened but then, you know, he came out and he was healthy. He was happy. I have the mo my camera died, sorry. But I have the most respect to women who can labor all the way through. I don't know what happened with my epidural, but um, I kind of wish that I could have done it just to have both experiences. But then again, I'm not too hung up on it. And I know lots of women care about like C-sections versus vaginal births, but you know, I don't care and I hope like no one really puts too much weight on either of those because they each have their benefits and they each have their cons but um yeah let me show you him he's like <laughs> look at the cheeks if you guys follow me on Instagram um you see a lot more of him oh does he have spit does he have spit but yeah this is him and Mariah is absolutely obsessed and she's like the best big sister ever but um yeah he is here 
and I am just really thankful that he's healthy and we're finally getting like a routine down. I just wanted to fill you guys in. You are going to be seeing some regularly scheduled content. I just couldn't move on with regular content and just pretend that this situation didn't happen. So thank you guys for sticking with me and I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your birth stories down below if you have any weird situations with epidurals too. Let your girl know. So yeah, I will talk to you guys later. You gonna say bye? Oh, he still has a loose neck. He's getting, he's getting there. Someone has the hiccups. Okay, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.